In today's video, what I want to take a look at is how you can actually serialize a linked list. Now, because a linked list has nodes which actually have addresses in them, you cannot just straight up serialize the node struct itself like with any other structure because if you serialize the node, the whole node struct itself, it means that you are serializing this uh, node pointer, right? But this pointer, when you deserialize it, might not actually be a valid address in your own address space. So uh, this idea of serializing the whole node wouldn't work for linked lists. So we have to have a different approach. And I think the easiest approach that I can show you here is to simply treat the linked list as any other list or array for that matter and serialize it that way. So, therefore, instead of actually serializing the whole struct, we're just going to serialize each integer. So to start things off, we're going to create a simple serialize function here saying void serialize. And uh, this guy will just take in a uh, node pointer to root. It's not a double pointer to root because we don't need to actually change the linked list itself. We're just going to serialize it to some file and be done with it. And uh, that's everything that we need to take uh, as an input for that function. The first step is to first open a file. We're going to actually serialize it to a file and then read from that file the serialized data. Now, the first thing to do here is to actually open a file because we're going to actually serialize to a file and deserialize back from the file into our own program. So here we have um, a file, file pointer equals f open. I'm going to call it Let's call it list.txt and I'm going to open for writing, of course, because we're serializing it. Now, if that file is null, let us, I guess we can just simply exit out of the program with an error code and consider error code one as some sort of failure here at uh, writing the file. Now, to actually write each integer from our linked list, we're going to have to iterate it. To iterate our linked list, we have here a simple for loop that I have shown you in a previous video that I'm going to just copy and paste without the printf because we don't need it. And inside here, what we're going to do is just call fprintf. And oh yeah, first is the file, so the file that we want to write to, then the format string. You can really use any format string you'd, you'd like. I just want to have it be simple and straightforward. So I just use percent D, a comma, and a space just so that it looks nice. And then, of course, the parameter that we want to write. And what is that parameter? Well, of course, the current node is what we're iterating over. So we want something from this current, and that is the X uh, field, which is our integer. Cool. And of course, let's not forget about closing this file. Okay. That's perfect. This is our serialized function. This should actually just take the linked list, take each integer from that linked list and save it to our list.txt file. Okay, so I'm gonna just call it here, serialize of, uh, let's say root, and we actually don't need to pass in a an, uh, reference to that root. We just need to pass in the pointer itself. As I said, we don't need a double pointer and we can try to run this. And by running this, we should have now a file called list.txt that has the three numbers that we've added to the linked list. Notice here, I created a simple linked list with three elements that were inserted at the end of the list. So minus two, 11 and 22. So we should have that in the same order and we do indeed have uh, them in the same order on this file. That's perfect. Now onto deserialization. How do we proceed with this? Here, we're going to start with creating a function, deserialize, let's say. And I want, this time I actually want a double pointer to the node. We need a double pointer here because we're actually going to create the linked list from the ground up in term, in term modifying. It. So to start off, of course, we're going to still open a file and I'm going to just copy and paste this part because it's the same except for this little flag that tells us that we want to read from this. All right, again, if the file is null, we can exit. Let's say exit with error code 2 this time. Doesn't really matter in our case. And the fun part begins. Now, for this example here, I'm going to use a function that I defined in the past called insert end. And this insert end simply takes in a double pointer and the value that we want to insert to the linked list. 
and it creates everything for us in there. If you want to find out how I created this insert and function, there's a link at the top here that you can check it out. So to start things off, what we can do is uh, declare ourselves as a variable here, let's say val, and this is where we're gonna store each integer that's being read. Now, uh, we're gonna read the integers one by one. In that case, we're gonna need a loop. And I'm gonna choose here a while loop. And inside this while uh, loop, the condition is actually gonna be a bit tricky, but I'm going to explain it in uh, after we're done actually writing the function call. And that function call is going to be fscanf. And we need fscanf because we're reading from a file and it has a certain format that we need to read from. And that file is called file in our case. Um, the format, it has to be basically the same as the one up top, which is this one. So I'm gonna do just that. And then here we're gonna uh, specify where to save that value that we read from the file. And in our case, we have this val variable, which we can save to. Okay, now this while loop actually has to stop at some point, right? And the stop condition is actually kind of interesting. I'm going to uh, verify if the fscanf return value is higher than zero. Because fscanf, what it returns to us is how many uh, variables it was able to read. And since here we only have one variable, its on success is going to return us one, right? But if there's a failure at reading, it's going to give us a number less than zero, so negative one or whatever else. But if it's uh, it, if so, if it's zero, that means that the reading was successful, but there was nothing to be read. Or if it's a failure, it's going to give us negative one, and it's going to also exit out of the while loop. So we only want to continue the while loop if we still have things to read. And once we're here in the while loop, we know that, okay, well, val is set to some integer from the list here. So val is my, maybe 11 and then 22 and so on and so forth. Therefore, we can simply use our insert and function and just pass in our root. Notice I'm just passing it without any ampersand. We actually want the double pointer itself to be passed here. And then we can just say val and that's and that's it. And then, of course, at the end, I'm going to F close the file. Now, the last thing is to actually call this function. Now, the, to call this DCIS function, I'm going to actually create a second linked list. I'm going to say here node root 2 equals null. And I'm going to call deserialize to this root uh, 2 here. And it's going to read into our uh, second linked list. And what I'm going to show here, instead of iterating over the first linked list, I'm going to iterate over the second linked list. And let's not forget about deallocating the uh, linked list itself. Now, if I try to launch this, we should see on the screen the same result, right? Negative 2, 11, and 22. But this is, this is from the second linked list, right? So we actually iterated over it and we have printed every single integer from that linked list that was read from our file. Now, why is this so cool? This is pretty cool because now I can actually uh, serialize the linked list from one process and deserialize it into another. So here I can simply comment out this whole thing, right? And instead of deserializing into the second linked list, I can deserialize in the first linked list so that I can initialize it. And here the same thing. And if I comment out this root 2, which is not needed anymore. We can try to launch this and you will notice that we get the exact same result even though we don't create a linked list in here. We just simply deserialize the file, right? So now you don't need to actually create it every single time in memory. You can just simply read it from the file and voila, you have it right there. And now I can actually play, play with it a little bit and have like, let's say 40, 100, negative 10, and so on and so forth. Make sure you don't forget about the comma and space every time. This is this is my uh, type of format. If you have a different one, make sure you don't forget the last one here because I'm not doing anything special with it. All right, and now we can launch this and you'll notice that the actual values are going to be all here 
inside this linked list. That's about it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. The source code can be found in uh, the link in the description below on our website, of course. And if you do have any questions, you can leave them down below in the comments or on our Discord server. Again, the link is in the description. Take care. Bye. So, therefore, instead of actually serializing the whole struct, we're just going to serialize each integer. Integer? Integer. Oh.